Hi, I'm Sarah Lacey. Oh, and this is Paul Carr. And welcome to Wise News. <laughs> Sorry, it's unsustainable. <laughs> right. um, my, uh, my experiment in not breathing. It it's over. It's over. I, who knew? I mean, I, I honestly, I thought I could do it. I thought I could do it for the whole month, but uh, I guess I'm addicted. And you know what? It's funny enough. Um, you share something in common with MG and Robin because I guarantee he's answered the phone today and MG did do some emails on his month off of email. It's almost like that whole, um, that's it, I'm quitting, insert name for technology here thing is, is total bullshit. <laughs> it's like it sounds good for a headline, but it doesn't really. In, I will say, to MG's credit, MG wrote in his post, I'm going to partly give up email for a month, um, but I'm still going to replace for important ones and still send important ones. And he stuck to that. So this, part of what we wanted to talk today about was this rush of everyone feeling like they have to quit communication because it's overwhelming. Yeah. And, um, you know, to me, I, I see a lot of overlap with the same frustration with email and phone and everything else yeah. to um, a lot of the commentary I've been hearing between Facebook and Google Plus where, you know, like, for instance, my husband loves Google Plus uh -huh. because he can put everyone very easily in these groups. He Which he does already. He can with if those you, groups. If you know Jeff, he often puts people into <laughs> The buckets. <laughs> I know our parties are really awkward. Uh, but, you Stay know. over there with the nerds. <laughs> Those would be my friends. Yeah. Um, That's what he so. said to me. <laughs> So, you know, you can put people into groups, you can just speak to those groups, you can just follow those groups. And, yeah. you know, it's like, as he's describing all the reasons he likes Google+, Plus, like, I just keep hearing, well, like, you know, you just have been using Facebook wrong, or you yeah. just have been using Twitter wrong, because you could do those things The on people those who services. demanded, yeah, the people who I hear complain about Facebook, and I'm, I'm an atypical Facebook user, I don't have a personal account, I have this ridiculous fan page that I had to set up for my book, but I don't, I don't use Facebook that often, but... But all the complaints I hear from people who use Facebook is, is this idea of, oh, we need groups because I need to be able to hide such and such a thing from my boss. And like, oh, I have 27,000 friends and I can't cope yeah, with that Yeah, what I hear friends. is I want a do-over because I've added too many people and I don't know these people. Right. And it's like, was that Facebook's fault? Yeah, it's like blaming pizza for the fact you're fat. It's like, right. not, that's what, not what's called. That. I'm pregnant. It's like blaming, it's like blaming babies. <laughs> Um, no, but it's like blaming... It is the baby's fault. It's like, I'm blaming the baby, and if the baby had eaten a little less pizza. <laughs> um, no, but my point is, it's it's basically all the complaints I hear, and it's the same as, it went, as when we heard with the privacy debate. It's yeah. like, Facebook has changed its settings, so now these photos that I should never have put online in the first place are being seen by people I don't want to see them. It's rather like... Uh, writing a postcard, writing your intimate secrets on a postcard, sending it, and then complaining that the world can read it, and then blaming the postal service. The fact is, people are using people who complain are often using these things wrong. But here's the question: It's like so we can go through sort of story after story, whether it's privacy uproar, whether it's email not working, yeah. whatever, and say, well, that's just kind of user error. But at at a point. Should, you know, we had this in the last five years or so, this huge move where software was expected to be more usable, yep. more friendly, have certain features, be cleaner, be simpler. I mean, there's this whole yeah. design bar that was raised on software over the last five years. Do we need to get to a point where there's another bar that's raised where software actually helps eliminate user error? Is it enough for Facebook to say, well, then you're just using the site wrong? Should Facebook have some sort of lever in the system? Or it's not just idiot proof, but it actually cures idiot. Well, you I mean, come into you look, an look idiot at LinkedIn. And you leave a For a long time, LinkedIn actually um, curtailed how fast it could grow right. because you had to have someone's email address. Yeah. You know, and now they've sort of gotten around that a little bit, but they they never want it to be as open as well, Facebook I mean, was. The, the, yeah, I mean, because and, the point was, these are some professional network. There does seem to be, yeah. I mean, there does seem to be a trend towards, um, yeah putting restrictions on what you can do in order to to avoid this kind of user even to, I mean, and things like I mean Twitter was that it was like it's 140 characters uh, there's a lot of these services come along now where it's all and there was that ridiculous email thing that came out recently where it was like you can only use 100 words or whatever it was that everyone on TechCrunch went mad about now no one uses anymore <laughs> um, where it's all about well let's put let's artificially limit what people can do because people clearly can't be trusted to keep emails short or to right. to, to do whatever I don't know. I mean, for me, it seems like the technologies that are the most successful, Facebook is one, the telephone, whatever else, are the ones that can lead to these sort of ridiculous addictive behaviors. And mm -hmm. it's, it's inherent in them being successful. Like, like you would, I mean, teenagers spend too much time on the phone and, and rack up, you used to rack up these huge phone bills. 
Does that mean the telephone was was broken? Does that mean somebody needed to invent a telephone that would cut teenagers off after five minutes? Or is it some parents would argue yes? Some parents would argue yes, but they would be wrong because the the, the reason why the telephone led to that behaviour is because it was so successful. I would argue the reason why Facebook is so successful is because it does allow this ridiculous oversharing. It does allow you to just gather. What it does allow, I mean, like again, one of the complaints you hear is, "Oh, well, this is this person I went to high school with. I haven't seen them since. I don't want to read their updates or look at their baby pictures." But it is kind of like that thing about like flying where it's like, you know, somehow we've gotten past the wonder of like, we're covering the United yeah. States in four hours and we're like, oh my God, the internet isn't working. It's like, yeah. is part of what's so frustrating about Facebook, the fact that it, it, are we losing sight of the fact of how seamless it made it to reconnect with everyone you've ever known? Well, I think, yeah. I, I mean, that's the, the, it's, it's sort of like heroin, I guess, in that... <laughs> From my experience, I think we found the title of this post. From my experience, it's sort of like heroin. I know. Exactly. I try and just get in a ridiculous <laughs> quote in everything, just so we have the title. Uh, and that's why unicorns no longer exist. Um, no. So the, um, but it is. It's that idea of you know the initial rush and go, wow, this is where has this been all my life? And then very quickly go, oh my god, this has ruined my life. The overarching point is that a lot of these technology, a lot of the complaints of these technologies, is because they make it so easy to to get addicted to them. And I. I would argue, as someone who has written quite a lot on addiction before, I don't have a huge amount of time for people who moan about how they're addicted and there's nothing they can do. It's like people say, you know, oh, I have 12,000 Facebook friends. It's a disease. It's not. <laughs> Stop having 12,000 Facebook friends. You know, get help. I mean, but don't blame Facebook. I don't, I don't go around claiming that, uh, campaigning for bars to close because I used to not be able to drink <laughs> responsibly. It's like I'm perfectly, I look around and I see people who are perfectly able to drink responsibly and I think they should have the pleasure of bars. I look around and I see people who can use Facebook properly, so email you, properly, telephone so properly, you whatever properly. Software, even sort of mission critical, job critical communication software like email as um, the same as, you know, sort of personal responsibility if you're eating Big Macs every day, personal responsibility if you're smoking every day. Yeah. I want Don't co- blame the person I want commercial it. jetliners to have fail safes and to have things that alarms that go off if pilots fuck up. I don't care if people get addicted to email. I just don't. And I don't care if, if somebody says, oh, I use the phone too often. Well, then stop using the phone. I mean, no. And, and even to the point, like I saw in, in MG's post, um, him saying, I want to rid the world of email. Like he, I know he, and he was obviously being slightly sort of facetious and slightly pointing out that, it, you know, slightly highlighting the fact that that's impossible. But he did say it's my mission to, to get rid of email, to kill email. And it's like, why? Lots of people get a huge amount of enjoyment out of email. Yeah. I love email. <laughs> I, I don't, well, I, I mean, managed to and, not and have frankly, an inbox with, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm 120,000 times less popular than MG. It's very possible. But I managed not to have 120,000 emails a month, you know. Well, because I, do I don't give my a... email address to every single person and sign up to every list and I don't get right. tips at techcrunch.com. I mean, I do have quite a few mostly because of tips, but it's like I also use Google Priority Inbox, which yeah. sorts it quite cleanly. And I, and I don't have any... Is that why you never reply to my emails? T- yes, because you are a, a negative. A non-priority. Um, I, I also do not have the obsession with the zero inbox. Yeah. I, I accept I will never get through it, but it's yeah. like... Uh, you know, but yeah, I mean, same thing. I also just don't sign up for anything. But to me, the idea of people I have, I have DMing me pitches, like there's somewhere, I am a reporter. That is what I do for yeah. a living. People are going to have to send me pitches. The idea of DMing them to me is so much worse than right. just filling up this inbox that I've kind of have conditioned myself to be able That's to definitely pitch. another thing as well. I, I, I think it's ludicrous. Like there's, some of it is unavoidable. With all due respect to our colleagues at TechCrunch who have quit these things, the... the, the, uh, uh, the Alternative they suggest is often ludicrous. I have to say the idea of I don't need email instead I'm going to use Twitter DMs, ludicrous. It's a completely different medium. Well, it is I, for us. I mean, I think it's different demographics. Are different. If you're only getting 140 character emails, then yeah. But but my yeah, and it is for us. It's fine. My my friends will often send me quite long thought. You know, replacing letters essentially. Right. Yes, you could distill the meat of that into 140 characters, but you could distill the meat of you know, Macbeth into 140 characters, well, but it doesn't make the length a bit unenjoyable. I'm getting, um, you know, information that is is pretty private over email yeah. um, from certain, you know, sources or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, DM fails are pretty easy to happen. I don't, and, Facebook and, and, message fails are pretty easy to happen. Like, it's, And regardless of the DM fail aspect, I don't trust Twitter. Yeah. And the quitting phone calls thing as well. What I like about the phone is, again, it's a decentralized system. Mm-hmm. Why are we, why have we, I thought the whole point of the internet was supposed to be this idea that there was no one point of failure. Why are we now, why are the, the, the cool kids in tech 
trying to turn their back on a decentralized, you know, we got Robin quitting phone, um, MG quitting email. Why are we turning our back on a decentralized thing and saying, well, I'm now going to only use Skype or I'm now going to only, like that doesn't make any sense to me. Not least because you say you're, you're going to quit phones. Skype, I wouldn't trust Skype as my only connection in emergencies in the outside world. I just mm-hmm. wouldn't. So I assume Robin's saying, oh, well, except for emergency calls. Right. Uh, in the same way as email, uh, MG was saying, well, except for vital emails. And it's like, well, if your backup plan is yeah. to use this thing, why not just use this thing? It is hard to actually quit things. So you know uh, what I quit several years ago? Voicemail. Oh, yeah. The day yeah. that I left Business Week, I changed my outgoing thing to say, I, I will not check a voicemail. Yes. Don't leave it for Dickest me. Message. And um, it is. And, and I haven't done it. And a lot of people have said, uh, same thing probably people say to, to MG of, you know, oh, I respect you taking the stand because I hate my voicemail and I can't get away with it. Um, for me, you know, it, it worked fine because everyone had, there were, there were definitely a few things I missed out on, but everyone had access to text pretty much yeah. or send me an email or just call back. The thing with voicemail though is I don't feel like that is the core, that's not a core thing. Like, like the telephone is the core thing. The voicemail was a handy bolt on that made telephoning convenient because there was no other way to send somebody a message. Right. Now there is another yeah. way, which is email and everybody has So I guess it, so. my point is I eliminated the part of the phone that pissed me off. Right, but you didn't eliminate the phone. We've now reached a point in society where, and I guess this is maybe what MG is hoping for with email, uh, a point in society where almost no voicemail you ho- that you could be left will be critical. Almost no critical right. messages are left on voicemail anymore because they're not considered a primary communications medium anymore. The idea of leaving somebody an urgent voicemail, it's... You quit social media. I How, did. So you're, I mean, you're doing a lot of good-natured well, now. mocking of Robin and mm-hmm. MG, but you had your own little hissy fit and quit social media. I did. How is that different? Uh, it's different because it's not a communications medium. It's different because I... Social media is a marketing tool. Um, and one might argue that my quitting of it acted genuinely unintentionally but acted as a quite effective marketing tool and that's the thing is that my quitting social media got me more attention than my staying on social media so one might argue that was that i chose a more you're only on social media as a marketing tool i'm not it's a so it's no i I, i'm using i'm using the word marketing very loosely by to which i don't mean to market my books i mean as a a broadcasting tool a, a a way of of extending my voice to, I, I would never use it as a communication You're an egomaniac. I'm, I I use it, I I'm on it to stay in touch with my family and friends. No, no, I'm not. I, in an I, efficient way. I have email for that. My point about writing a post earlier saying giving up breathing, to say you're giving up email or phone is like saying you're giving up breathing. It's so critical now to the way we communicate and the way people expect to be able to reach us with critical information about our lives that, that, to, that to give it up is not... It's not a bad idea, it's just impossible. Once again, this might be our last wise decision. We have we to say, say at the end... Well, because of the constantly no, because growing... because of you. It's always... It, because of ours, um, this may <laughs> be the last one. It's not working out. <laughs> well, we may also choose to give up video. <laughs> Join us next week, maybe, on Why Is This News.